Hi, and welcome to Mishlei. I am your host, Rabbi David Katz. All right, we finished the introduction to Mishlei after a couple of years, literally. And as the Vilna Ga'in says, that the first six verses are an introduction to Mishlei, which we did about as thorough as you can do. <laughs> um, yeah, we did it pretty good. It, it took, uh, I think, all of two years, maybe more, maybe less, but around two years we did. And those classes are available in the archives. So now, according to the Gra, we're going to be entering a new stage of Mishlei. And it's again, it's my intention to always be in Mishlei because... Mishle is a good place to be. And there's no rush in Mishle. We're taking our time. We're doing it right. So we're on the v- verse 7, chapter 1. And again, according to the Gra, this is where the book starts. And I'm not one to argue with the Gra. Yiris Adenai Reishis Da'as Chachma Umusr all right, so get a running start in your brains. And remember what we're doing here, right? Shlomo wants to learn the whole Torah, type one. And by doing so, he's going to become Rabbi Solomon. And in doing so, we, again, we just we have 15 aspects. Go review the old classes. Musser, Bina, Lahavin, Seichel, Tzedek, Mishpat, all your friends. All your friends. Right? Go review those guys. And we want to say that, and I had a really good Kavana, and I forget what it was. Uh, I think we're saying like charged, right? You got to be charged. You got to be Metatronic. You got to be electric. Everywhere you go, you got to be turned on. Don't be a clown. And that's what he's saying. Shlomo is discovering his on button. Type one for the on button. He's trying to be plugged in, supercharged, paying attention, learning wisdom. Understanding that that whole process is called verses one through six, so that he could understand the mushal and the melitza and the words of rabbis when he calls his friend and his friend becomes a rabbi by explaining whatever it is that he's working on. It's called life. It's just called life. Being turned on pro life. So now that you've done that. All right, let's slow it down and figure this out. Ready? So again, what's what's he leading up to? That's my burn question. What's the buildup? What are we leading up to? So we're coming in from verses, let's look at five and six as a buildup, yeah? Yishmah. So blah, 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 blah. Mushle, 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 turned on and supercharged. Yishma Chacham, the wise man will hear and gather understandings and teachings. And the Navon, the guy who hears the matter in the matter, he will acquire strategy. Lahavin, in order to understand the mushle Malit, he has a style of learning. Type one, Justin Becker. He has a style, a learning style. I think style's the word here. He's gaining a style. You know what bothered me about rock and roll growing up? Justin, you know what bothered me about rock and roll growing up? I was watching MTV like everybody else. And you have your uh you have you have the kind of music that you like. And I'm saying how come you have a guitarist how come he doesn't play, like, how many of you have ever heard of Peter Frampton? Type one, if you've ever heard of Peter Frampton. Peter Frampton comes alive. 
If you haven't, Google it. Go ahead and don't quit and don't be ashamed. Go ahead and Google Peter Frampton Comes Alive. Whenever I give my lessons, by the way, when you hear it, you don't know what I'm talking about, sports analogies and such, just Google it. That's We live in a Google age. It's okay. Okay, so you got Peter Frampton and, and, and type one, if you've ever heard of Def Leppard. Let's talk about Def Leppard and Peter Frampton. And I wondered as a kid, how come the guitarist for Def Leppard, how come he didn't have like a mouth guitar piece like Peter Frampton? Why? I like to listen to that that kind of noise. And I like to listen to that other kind of noise. How come everybody just doesn't have every other kind of thing? For example, why doesn't Taco Bell sell hamburgers? Why doesn't Kentucky Fried Chicken sell Chinese food? You understand know, where I'm going with this? Why doesn't Denny's, the, the, a, a family restaurant, sell uh, gour- a gourmet menu? How come Denny's, they don't have Denny's grade A? Why don't they have that? How come, okay, you got it, right? Now, where was I going with that? I lost my absolute muscle here. That's, that's, that's horrible. Style, that's what it was. Yeah. So when you realize that McDonald's doesn't have to sell Chinese food, why not, Justin Becker? Because McDonald's has narrowed its menu down, and it basically said, you know what? We have a style. We have sell hamburgers. And you know what goes with hamburgers? Fries. You know what goes with fries? Soft drinks. You know, it goes with, with soft drinks, milkshakes, and ketchup, maybe a salad for the guy on the diet. And then if you go to Taco Bell, they don't sell hamburgers. Why? Because they have their own style. We say we're a Mexican fast food chain. We don't need to sell Chinese food in our chain. So then you get into my favorite thing to talk about, which you all loathe, and that's wrestling. And what's the best part about wrestling? And you can institute, insert in, in that analogy, football, cricket for our South African friends, uh, frisbee, golf, you name it. What makes wrestling great, again, filling your own blank there, is styles. One guy that I like in wrestling was a guy who wrestled in the last decade. He was about a tall, lanky guy, and he pinned everybody. Because he was tall and lanky. People couldn't figure it out. Now, on a more profound level, there's a guy who won the championships. And listen to this. I don't care if you like sports or not. Listen to this. There's a guy who, like, I'm talking real wrestling. We're not talking pro wrestling now. Come on, NCAAs. And what is NCAA wrestling? Google it. Google NCAA wrestling. There was a guy who won the national championship back in the mid-2000s. Now, why was he the coolest guy that ever lived? Justin, you know why? You know why this guy I'm talking about was the coolest guy that ever lived? He won the 125-pound weight division. Can you believe that? There was a guy who won the 125-pound division. Now, again, that probably doesn't sound too amazing. Every year, someone wins it. So what's the hit is Justin Becker? Anthony Robles. He did it with one leg. He was born without a leg. So if he had had two legs, i.e. his natural body type would be to weigh somewhere probably around 160 pounds. Can you imagine that? Big, strong guy at 160 pounds. You remove his leg. Now he's wrestling 125 pounds. That's kind of like me as a grown man wrestling a kindergartner. Do you think a kindergartner would have a chance against me? Probably not, right? So this guy is an ox, strong, okay, a little bit slow. He's he's disabled, but he learned how to get around his disability. And he's manhandling little guys. That's called style. You see how that wrestler had a style? Wrestlers have styles. Boxers have styles. Guys that play cricket have styles. I have no idea. I'm just making that up. But 
I'm sure cricket guys do have styles. Jacques type one. Is a style to hold it? You're going to be called a bat? Is the cricket bat called a bat? Jacques, hello? Is it called a bat? That The, the bat, the, yeah, there you go. The cricket bat, there's styles to hold it. And I never even saw a cricket match. I just know how sports works. So that's what Shlomo's saying, too, is that the wise man will develop a style of how he can find wisdom, right? Do you have to have your notepad in your back pocket? Do you write notes on your phone? Because today we have smartphones. Do you make a mental note? Do you memorize it and then go home and write it out? How do you learn? Do you watch? Are you a visual learner? Are you an audio learner? So you have your style. What I hate about public school, and I do hate public school, is they deprive creativity of kids in their style. They don't let you have style. Could you imagine if they gave you style points in school? I would have been a straight A student. My style is to sit on the floor. Could you imagine that in sixth grade? David, why aren't you in your seat? Because my style is to be comfortable when I learn. And I might want to sit on the floor. I might not want to sit in a hard plastic chair. No reason. Just might be my style. But we deprive people of style. When people write weird and encode in their own little vernacular, when you grow up and you're old, and you're old enough to eat ice cream before your dinner and you won't spoil your dinner, you're allowed to develop your style. And that's part of growing up is breaking the mold that they try to put you in. Klepa wants to put you in the mold. I don't know why, but it does. So what Shlomo Melech is saying is, hey, y'all, listen up. Be a navon. Hear the matter in the manner. Gain style. Justin, isn't style a good word? Type one, Jock, for style being a good word. They want cookie-cutter little kids that don't have any style. And you will not learn or succeed if you don't have style. I know that when I, when I left Colo and I was teaching English, that is a segue into what I'm doing now, they, they give you a trite little book to teach people in, English as a second language. And I, I wasn't brave enough to have my own style. I didn't want to get fired. So I stuck to the book. And I'm a Talmudist, so I really stuck to the book. And they were saying that wasn't right. And the, the experienced teachers, they kind of just went in and out of the book at their own style. You, everyone was allowed to develop their style. They didn't fill me in on that little secret. And uh, the job was kind of loathsome, and I ended up leaving, obviously. But the point is that those that were successful at it found their style. And if, you're at, if, you, if you stick with anything long enough, you will develop your style. Style is a code word, an icker term, a jargon term for you being comfortable in your own element doing what you do best to succeed at what you need to do. Type one, because that's what it is. So Shlomo is giving you style, Shlomo's style of how to master the Torah. And therefore, he's going to have his style of learning and his, his strategies. The style and strategy are very similar. Jock type one, as you know what I mean, style and strategies are very similar. For example, why does the cricket player stand a certain way? That's his style because he has a strategy. He might want to hit it in a particular direction or do whatever he needs to do as a strategy, and the style matches the strategy. In order to understand the words of wisdom, type one. Yiras Adenoi. Now, how does that segue work? Let's figure it out. Ready? So I'm doing all my style points, and I'm really cool. I'm Solomon. Yay. I'm learning. In order to understand, 
Yiras Adinai Reishis Das. That's a, what does that mean? Lahavin Moshal Melitza Divrei Chochomim Vechidoisam Yiras Adinai Reishis Das. Is it a totally new topic, like the Gra says? Or is, is it a one long continuous thing? Ah, I'm going to go with this pshat. Ready for this pshat? Lahavin Moshul of Alitza, Divrei Chochomi, Vichidaisim. Justin Becker, can you fetch for me, please, the very last. Couple verses of the of what do you call it in English? Kohelis. What is that in English? Ecclesiastes. And fetch is a South African term. That's why I brought it up. No offense to you. I'm, we're just speaking the vernacular of the room. That's what they say down there. Jacques Type One. Is that what you guys say down there? Quentin Type One. Is that what you guys say down there? Justin, can you get that? The last couple of verses of Ecclesiastes. Kohelis. One or two. Two. One. 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 Two. Two. Shock one. Hello. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hurry up. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ecclesiastes. Kohelis. Is Solomon trying to figure out the meaning of life? And he ends it. The, the end of all things. This is what life's all about. And he tells you, the end of the matter, everything having been heard, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the entire of man. For every deed, God will bring the judgment. Can you put the Hebrew, please? So we can see the Lushan. The end of the matter, everything. I know the word, the name of God there is Elohim. But, um, I want to see the end of it, the matter, everything. I want to see what, what does it mean, everything having been heard. I think that's just bad English, actually. Uh, no, it's actually true. Sof Tavar HaKod Nishma Esa Elohim Yira Ve'es Mitzvay Sav Shema Gizek Hula Adam. So you see, King Solomon's conclusion was fear God. Now, it's a different name of God. We'll figure out why. And when everything is being heard, see, there's that thing. He's gonna he, he, Solomon wants you to listen. In the very next verse, he's gonna say, "Shma b'ni Musar Avicha, my son, listen to the Musar of your father." So again, he's saying the essence of the rabbinic code and the Torah code is to fear God, right? Lahavi Mashu Malitza Divrei Chochami Mechidaisa Kolin. Yiras adinoi reishis das chokma umusar a vilim bazu. So the fear of God, that's what everything has got to come down to. And then it's reishis das. There's a million ways we can chop, chop this up. Yiras adinoi reishis das. Yiras adinoi. Reishis Das. Chachma Musr. Now, the, I don't know how to read this because there's a million ways we can read this. I mean, you can take it any way and it's going to work. Can you see that? You can say, I mean, this is any way you chop this up. Um, you know what? We got to find the, the meme to put in the room uh, for this verse. Can Justin, can you write that down next time? To remind me, since we're on the new verse, to put the verse in the meme form in the room, please. Uh, but you know what? In the new yeshiva, I don't know if we can do that. I don't know if we have a whiteboard. we got to find that out. Anyways, it says, Fear of God, that's what we want to do. Reishis Das is the beginning of this high level called Das, right? The, the enlightened mind. Now, what Chachma is doing there, I don't know. That's a good question. Do we say Das Chachma of knowing wisdom? Or, I mean, there's a, Kabbalistically, you can read that in a million ways. And then do we include Musr? Das Chachma and Musr? Or do we say in Musr a Vili Mazu? 
But the Musser, the, the, the uh, clowns, will, will make fun of. We got to see the commentaries. But this is just, this is profound. All right, so let's start with, let's see what our friend Raj, uh, I'll give you the usual, usual uh, choices. You want to go to, to the Targum, Rashi, Mitsudis, Ralbag, Ben Ezra or Malbim? I know what you guys are going to say. Let's hear it. Come on. Let's hear it. Where you guys want to go? Come on. Hello. 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 Come on. No, Jacques, you're supposed to say Targum. Because every time I give you guys choices, you say Targum. You want Rashi? Is here going to be Rashi or Targum? Which one is it, gang? Rashi or Targum? Rashi or Targum? Rashi or Targum? Rashi or Targum? All right, Matt. <laughs> We're waiting on, on the Asi now. Jacques goes Targum. So Justin Becker, make, flip the coin. What's it going to be? Sounds good. Is it an option? Targum or Rashi? Targum. All right, you guys. Did a little flip flop here. Usually it's Targum. Then it goes Rashi. Now it goes back to Targum. What's it, the sound is bad? Justin, you hear me okay? A little distorted. That's not too good. That's weird. Well, let's uh, let's keep it going. Uh, can you can you hear me? All right. Let's go on the targum here. You know what? I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go against you guys. I want to do Rashi. I'm sorry about that. Because the targum is gonna take more time. I want to. I want to just. Uh, I want to do Rashi. Sorry about that. I'm just saying, by the time we look it all up, we've already got a nice introduction. Rashi doesn't need looked up. That's the difference. So let's do Rashi. Here it says, Shem Reishi's Das. Al-Kercha Perish L'Tsoi Rechma Asa Shlomo HaSefer HaZeh. He said, yeah, he's, this is like the Vilna Gones thing. Why did King Solomon write this book? And now it begins. Ah, the Arta Matchila Sefer Yiras Hashem Rashi's Das. Rashi, the Vilna Gaon is giving you Rashi. When the Vilna Gaon says we start here, he's he's doing what? Copying and pasting from Rashi. He trumus Iker Hadas. The Yidi Yei Lecha Rishayne Ladas Livnei Choch Masecha. Again, so this, the book begins here with fear of God is the Reishi's Das. So once you're plugged in and supercharged, that's called DOS. Everyone say DOS. Right? It's in the, the Shmona Esri. God is Lachonin DOS. God graces people to have DOS. DOS is, is your intellect, your faculties, your life. And that's called the fear of God. By the time you have God consciousness, it's Das. You are not a bar Das if you don't believe in God. It's that simple. There's no such thing as Das without knowledge of God. He trumus Iker Hadas. Justin, do you have the English of this Rashi? I want to see how he's trans how you have translated trumus. Does it mean donation or does it mean to elevate or raise up? Can you post that please?
Not sure. Let's figure it out. Yeres Hashem, Rishis, Das, he, do I have, I don't have that. Uh, he, Trumas, Trumas, Iker, Hadas. What does that mean? The fear of the Lord being until here. He explained, and now, okay, we need the next part. The next part of that? That's the beginning part. Uh, first, no, what is that? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. And what? Uh, 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 this is the separation. Uh, 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 this is the sep- what? What are we doing here? The fear of the Lord is the okay. Is the beginning of knowledge. This is the separation of the fundamentals of knowledge. See, bad English. Why? It's just complicated Hebrew. What is he saying here? This is the separation of the fundamentals of knowledge. He trumas iker hadas. See that? That's <laughs> he's going to the separation trumas, like uh, like separating ties, tides. See, I told you, complicated word. They're they're calling it separation, like truma. I don't. I don't know if that's. Uh, I wouldn't call it that. That's that's weak. It's a very weak translation. Sorry about that. Let's figure it out. Here is Hashem Rishis Das, Yitrumas Iker Hadas. I'm. I gotta think quietly for a second. Hang on. Here is Hashem Rishis Das. By the way, Jacques, here's your word, Iker. You hear that? Trumas Iker Hadas. See it? <laughs> you can hear it at least, right? It's there. He Trumas Iker. Ah. Iker Hadas. There it is. So what does it mean, Trumas? That's a great word. Trumas Iker Hadas. Yeah. Trumas Iker Hadas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see. How does he translate that? This is the separation. No, 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 no. Trumas Iker Hadas. It's it, he's saying that Das is what you want to get to. It's separated out, it's elevated, and it, it's it's the focus of what you want. You want Das. Everyone say, I want Das. Iker Hadas. Or or you could say you also say he Trumas Trumas Iker. Also acknowledge of the Iker. On a deeper level, you can say it's the knowledge of the Iker. But it, but Das is the Iker, and Iker is the Das. Right? When you have Das, you understand Iker terms, Jacques, type one. So you can call it Iker, you can call it Das. It's just that thinking, that kind of mindset is what you want to have. The Hidiye Lechari Shaina Ladas Lifne Chachmasech. Right, you need to have das before your wisdom. You, when you go and you work at the coffee store, you have to have some pre das before you can have more wisdom compounded on top of it. Correct? You got to have an introduction, um, indoctrination, foundation. Then you can build the wisdom. So the, you don't go for wisdom. Stop trying to become wise. You need to get your mind turned on to Das. Then you use your style and strategy to find wisdom. So the heat ye la chayari shayna la das ignecha wasecha hectim li yira. 
Im Yutzrach, the heat he tem believe Chala sos pachoch moment. Hold on, the heat ye lecha rishon of das. Now, this is your translation there. Before you first, you fear your creator. Watch the leave here first for city knowledge. Wait, wait, huh? And what shall be for you first? What? I, I don't, do you understand that? I don't know. And what shall be for you first? Ah. Uh, uh, if you first precede. What? Does this English make any sense to you whatsoever? Uh, Das does come out of Chachma. That's according to Chabad and the Hasidus, but it, it really doesn't work that way. Um, there, it's not a linear map, right? The, the Ketor Chachma being a Das is not a linear map. It's just, it is what it is. And how how you are learning the piece, and so it's like gear. Right, you need to know it according to what we're talking about. So, in in some situations, you would not want das first. Das is connected to the seven midot. You would want chachman. So, it just depends on the model. Again, nefesh, Jacques, this is for you. Nefesh is a lowly level, but nefesh can also be the highest level. Jacques, type one. This English is atrocious. I am sorry. Uh, what does that mean? This is the separation of fundamentals of knowledge and what shall be for you first preceding knowledge before your wisdom. Uh, okay, I see that. It's a little strange. Let's try that. Okay. He, very weirdly worded, but okay. So, uh, Das has got to be first before your wisdom. And, and preceding that is the, is to fear. What does that mean? Man, we're not talking this. Ah, Yitzrich. Look, your your creator, Yitzrich. Got it. First, you got to fear your creator. Now we got it. Fear your creator, and he gives you in your heart. He places in your heart to do things with wisdom and with das. There you go. So when when uh, when uh, uh, remember, life is a very funny way. When we're kids, you don't realize how profound it is to be a kid. When a kid is playing with, let's just make this up for context, right? A little kid is playing with a light bulb, type one. A little kid, like two or three year old kid is playing with a light bulb. And the parents say, oh, honey, that's so sweet. Look at little Johnny. He plays with toys. Wow, he's really growing old, isn't he? Yes, he is. Now, we say, stupid kid, don't break the light bulb. You're going to cut yourself, and I'm not paying for the doctor bill. And then we buy a little fake uh, play school light bulb kit, and we say, oh, isn't that fun? He likes to play as long as he's not bothering us, right? Type one. But what's really going on is this little kid is trying to understand electrical engineering. But he's only three years old. And if you were to kind of map out his life, the kid is interested in electrical engineering. He's interested in complicated wisdom, knowledge, stuff. And he's got to go to school, develop his mind, in order that he should satisfy what God put in his heart. So in retrospect... Was he just a stupid kid playing with some stupid toys? One or two. One or two. No. Right, exactly. So then you got a little kid going, well, dad, mom, vroom, vroom. And they say, oh, he must love cars. 
Little boys are so stupid and they just love cars. Little boys, right? What he really wants to know is how the engine of a car works, which requires wisdom and understanding and knowledge. You understand my muscle here? We, we, we think that life is just vroom, vroom, and noises and sights and sounds, but really people have wisdom and they have penetrating wisdom and they want to be able to manipulate the world's forces to make a, a life experience. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so what, what, this is placed in everybody's heart. So don't overlook that. To tap into that, you need to get to wisdom. But to get to wisdom, you need the knowledge, and the knowledge is fear of God. Why fear of God? Because ultimately, the fear of God is what is in your heart. That's why God put the wisdom in your heart. So when you fear the fear of God, you connect to the wisdom in your heart that God put there. Then you are a bardas. Then you can receive wisdom. That was absolutely awesome indeed, Justin Becker. Type one. That's the, the, the short circuit right there, Mazel, right there. So Solomon has wisdom in his heart. And therefore, for Solomon, the, the meaning of life is fear of God, because that is the shortest distance to the wisdom that God put in the heart of man. Solomon then says to himself and to others, fear God. And from fear of God, you connect to the wisdom in your heart, and you can do practically everything. But idiots and clowns do not fear God. They, they uh, how do you say that word, boozing? They make, make, some make fun of uh, wisdom and Musr. So I'll give you an example of what Musr and wisdom is here. Ready? Um, how many of you have ever seen a unicycle? How many of you have ever seen a unicycle? So you know how when you do a unicycle, you you got to, or better, yeah, let, me, let, me, let me change it. Let me change it. Let's say tightrope walking. Tightrope walking. Or you know what? I'm going to change it again. I'm going to change it again. How many of you have ever seen the movie The Karate Kid? Part one. Karate Kid, part one. He goes up on the, on, on the end of the fight. He puts the, the crane technique, and he kicks Johnny Lawrence in the nose and wins the match, right? The famous Daniel LaRusso move. If you were to be in a fight and you did that move, would you be laughed at by your friends? You would be laughed at. Everyone says, hey, look at Justin Becker. Let's push him to the ground and make fun of him. And then Justin goes up in the crane technique, and they say, oh, man, he thinks he's a samurai. Now, that's the idiot, and that's the clown that would laugh. But in the reality of things, wisdom kind of looks funny, right? Wisdom in Musser looks funny. It's a manipulation of the forces, right? When you, do a, when you break a, a block of wood, you say, hee-yaw, right? Hee-yaw. And everyone would laugh and say, uh -huh, he made a funny voice in his, when he was doing that. But the guy that knows how to break the wood and the concrete, you have to do a key up when you do it, and you're using wisdom and Musser to do it. So the electrical engineer, it has style. He has a tape measure. And, he, and they say, well, we're hanging up the TV on the wall and uh, – we wish we had uh, to know how high it was from the floor. And the guy comes and says, well, here, let me measure that for you. And they say, you're such a loser and a nerd. You carry a, a tape measure with you. What are you, some kind of d nerd or dork? And then he, that's how the idiot uses it, right? That's the, that's the clown. But the engineer says, why would I not carry a pencil and a tape measure and a ruler? But imagine in, in third grade, if you carry a tape measure, a pencil, and a ruler, would you be made fun of by the clowns in third grade? One or two. You would be made fun of by the clowns in third grade. 
And if that little electrical engineer knew better in third grade, he would say, you know, I'm not going to be unemployed like you. So everybody that's got the wisdom has their eccentric style and strategy and wisdom in Musser. The idiot or clown mocks you. But the guy with wisdom understands that to manipulate the forces of creation, you're going to be manipulated. I don't mean manipulate in a bad way, right? Um, making a key up in karate is a manipulation, right? You're, you're going outside the boundary of the normal movements of man, and you're manipulating forces. You're creating a little hurricane of energy. So you, 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 it is not natural to draw a straight line. With a ruler, you can manipulate and draw a straight line. I remember a kid that I went to school with when we were kids. He drew a picture of a car. And I said, wow. His name was Justin also. I said, Justin, that is a really cool car. How would you do that? I'm expecting Justin to tell me that he's a, a, a little Picasso. He said, well, I used a ruler. And I had to scratch my head and say, you can't do that. You can't draw a, a, a cool race car with a ruler. But do you realize how smart little Justin was? Everybody else was trying to you know, – we were playing within the factory system of no style in third grade where we have to, like, figure out how to draw a car. I don't know how to draw a car. Not by freehand, and I can't draw straight. But Justin Matthews, he figured out <laughs> – he moron – if you use a ruler, it comes out straight every time. That's called manipulation, right? He manipulated the drawing. I don't want it to look squiggly and scraggly like you. I'm going to draw it straight. That's not called cheating. That's called wisdom. All right, that's all for today. We did the Haile Garashi. I think we're in a good spot here. And uh, we will continue. Justin Becker. One six, remind me to do the Targum next time we have class. Yes, sure, Koyak.